Hello, everyone. I am Bruno Schmidt from the LSI group at FEFL. Thanks for joining me on this presentation about the Tool of Dome Library. So the library is part of the PFL Logic Synthesis Libraries. And these are a collection of modular off-the-shelf open source libraries for the development of logic synthesis and now quantum compilation. You can find more about the libraries, different libraries in, in our GitHub repository. So the Tradable Dome, it is a library for synthesizing and manipulating and optimizing quantum circuits. Following the trend of the other libraries in the LSI group, Little Doom, it is named after uh, a, a character in the, at least in the Waterland universe. Apparently that this was a really important requirement. It is also implemented in C++ 17. The library aims to support quantum compilation researchers. It is header only, so it is easier to integrate. It is easier to adapt and extend, a point that we try to illustrate in this talk. It is easier to contribute. It also takes scalability really seriously. It is designed to work with problems sizes in which quantum circuits outperform classical ones. Finally, it is important to keep in mind that Tooldom it is a library to support compilation. It is not a standalone compiler. So here's a brief outline of the talk. We will start looking under the hood with a little bit of a conceptual overview and some intermediate representation basics. And then I will try to motivate why to use the library by giving an example of synthesizing a classical defined quantum operation and how to write your Python framework, but in C++, so kind of Python++ sort of thing. So let's start with the concept overview. I will use this simple circuit diagram to illustrate the concepts used in Twiddledown. These lines in the diagrams are called wires. A wire can be either quantum or classical. In Twiddledome, a quantum wire is equivalent to a qubit. In this diagram, they are represented by the single lines. Similarly, a classical wire is equivalent to a classical bit. And here they are represented by double lines. Next, we have these operators. An operator is a fact that you can apply to a subset of wires. Quite often, this effect is a unitary evolution. In this circuit, we have the Hadamard operator, the, the X and Z operators, a C0 operator, which you can see as a control X operator, and the measurement operator. Note that ex the execution of the X and the Z operators depends on the state of some classical bit. When we apply an operator to a specific set of wires, we create what we call an instruction. Putting all together, we have a circuit. We look at a circuit as a set of wires and a sequence of instructions. Next, we have a look on the Tooldom IR and, uh, and see how we can create the circuit. So the intermediate representation. Before going any further and showing some code, let me do this disclaimer. So the Tooldom, it is in a beta state and then it's still under active development. So the API are subject to changes. Also, in the following code examples, the proper use of header files, inline functions, namespace are ignored for clarity. Some codes are not even complete. So we start with an empty circuit. All we need to do is to instantiate a circuit object. The constructor takes as, a, as input a string that names our circuit. Here there is a impl uh, small implementation detail. The circuit is implemented as a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. The implementation of the DAG guarantees that all nodes are always topological sorted. In our implementation, we always get a net list data structure, which is basically just a list of great gates for free. Once we have a circuit, we can create wires in it. Create wires is quite straightforward. For example, to create a qubit, we just need to call create qubit. We can optionally name your wire by passing a string to this function. Keep in mind that in the, in the library, all wires are named. So if you choose to not provide a name, the circuit will use some default naming convention to give, you, to give this wire a name. The create function, the create qubit function returns a wire ref. This is a, some lightweight object that serves three purposes. It is used to uniquely identify a wire within a circuit to indicate whether a wire it is classical or quantum, and 
and to indicate its polarity, the polarity of the reference. This is quite useful when you're trying to create negative, negatively controlled gates or that are also known as uh, open control gates and so on. Once we have create, created all the wires that we need, we can add structures to a circuit. But first, we will need to understand the operators. And here it is where one of the strengths of the library lies. It's open ecosystem of operators. What do I mean by that? Well, in Cluedo-Doom, you can easily define your own operators and abstractions in the IR. How easily, you might ask? Quite easily. Let me show an example to illustrate this. So the first step to create your own operator in the library is to create a class for it. This class should be able to return its kind as a constant string. There is no second step. You can add this operator as is to the circuit and have passes and algorithms handle it. How do we achieve this? What sort of black sorcery you use to have this sort of flexibility? Well, we use the concept model in Dio. I first learned about this in a talk by Shen Parent. I think he calls it the runtime concept idiom. And for those that know C++, it is basically type erasure. I will try to explain type erasure into this one slide that might get a little bit complicated. So how does idiom work? Basically, we encapsulate a concrete type, type that you have defined, in a templated wrapper that implements the interface of a pure abstract class. These wrappers forwards all the interface methods to the underlying concrete type. The pure abstract class is the concept. It captures the semantic and syntactic requirements on types. A model, it is any type that satisfies these concept requirements. I put all this into an operator class that actually hides the templates, the inheritance, and a lot of other details under the hood. This class can be constructed with any type that satisfy the operator concept requirements. I will not go into further details of the C++ implementation. All you need to know it is that we end up with a non-virtual interface, which encapsulates and hide polymorphism from the end user. It allows us to use duct typing without bothering to inherit from any library class. Clients that are using the library aren't burdened with inheritance, factories, class registration, nor memory management. Currently, the bar is quite low for other types to satisfy the requirements of the operator concept. They only need to be able to return a string that identify themselves when they are asked about their kind. Look at how simple it is to implement the not and the Hadamard operators. Having these operators defined, we can create instructions. And creating an instruction is almost as simple as creating wires. We just need to create, to use the create instruction function, which take an operator and a set of wires as input. So this is, this is it for the overview of the basic uh, intermediate representation. Now I will try to motivate the use of, of the library. Using, uh, using examples on synthesis. So let's imagine that you have a quantum operation that has its behavior defined by a classical Boolean function. It might be some fancy arithmetic function or maybe an oracle that describes some sparse Hamiltonian. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have it implemented and then you want it to add it to your, to your circuit. Let's imagine that also that you have some high level synthesis tool that takes your implementation, whatever format it is, and compile that into a logic network. And then here you can see an example of a logic network that it is basically just a directed acyclic graph. The library already supports several algorithms that are able to compile this network into a reversible circuit that uses C0 and Toffoli gates or you can even go directly to a Clifford plus T gate set. These algorithms, they will synthesize the circuit in place, but this might not be the best way to go. Going from a logic network representation to a C naught Toffoli circuit on a, or a Clifford plus T is quite a big jump into the abstraction levels. 
So what we can do it is actually add this logic network operator. By doing so, we retain some high level semantics of the structures of our quantum computation, which basically enables our compiler to discover more facts about the program. This can help also to fight better optimizations. As we have seen, creating a, a logic network operator is fairly trivial. Here you can see how a logic network class operator class might look like. Observe that here that we also use one of the other uh, LSI libraries to represent the, the logic network. We use it mock turtle to this end. Of course, that after adding this, uh, this operator to the network, to a, to a circuit, and then doing some uh, manipulations with it, at some point we'll need to compile it. This code snippet shows pretty much how a synthesis path would, would look like. You can iterate over your circuit, and when you do so, you visit one instruction at a time in topological order. You can sort of poke the instruction to see what is the operator that in, is inside it, and then if it is the operator that you're looking for. If it is, you can cast it and then use it. This is nice. We can add the logic networks to the to our quantum circuits, but still quite a big jump. What we can do is add more operators and more levels of abstractions. I, for example, have modified one of the algorithms to synthesize or uh, to synthesize a circuit on terms of parity operators and top and topoly gates. As the name implied, the parity operators are just like parity functions. And by looking at this, this higher level circuit, we can easily see opportunities of merging parity gates, which are basically linear parts of your circuit. And then try, and then I could further try to resynthesize them and optimize them in some way. And then once I'm ready, I can then decide to lower them into a, into a C naught Toffoli uh, gate set or a Clifford plus T gate set. Now let's, let's uh, go into another motivation to use the library. And let's assume that you have some sort of Pythonic framework that you might be a little bit unhappy about the performance of your compilation passes. And, and in that case, Twiddledon can actually help you, right? Maybe you're still not that convinced that going C++ is the way. So I would try to motivate the move to Twiddle Dome and the C++ with a few numbers. So imagine that I have the following problem. I'm given a circuit over the gates that parrot and Toffoli, that the ones that I synthesized before. And then I want to decompose the Toffoli into a Clifford plus T. Some details. I'm, the circuits are given as DAGs. And my decomposition of the Toffoli gate is also given as a DAG. The solution that I, for, for this problem, it is I traverse the DAG, the circuit DAG, and substitute all Toffoli nodes with the decomposition DAG. You're just kind of unrolling your uh, one DAG into another. I will be using some, um, some benchmarks from that are used in, in to, to benchmark Oracle compilation uh, syn synthesis algorithms. So here I have like a multiplier, log two, some uh, floating point uh, division and square root and EAS. I chose the circuit basically because they had a, a high number of Toffoli gates that we need to decompose. So it, it goes from either 12,000 up to 180,000 gates. And keep in mind that this operation of traversing a quantum circuit and substituting node it is quite common task in compilation process. As, as you're going down the different abstraction levels, you're always somewhat traversing the DAG, substituting and synthesizing nodes into a lower level of abstraction. So let's see a few numbers. I use QuizKit to uh, I first used QuizKit to solve this problem. 
It is fairly easy to implement that in, in, into QuizKit. You can see that there are two examples in which I don't have numbers. And what happened is that the system ran out of RAM and I ran out of patience in this, in this case. So for those, I don't have a, a number, but it is not so bad. I mean, it, it's a, at worst case, like 12 seconds. Then I, I decided to solve the same problem using Twilio. And here we can see uh, an improvement. You might, you might say that, okay, this is not a really big improvement, you know, maybe kind of half more or less, give or take. And then of course it is able to finish the, the, the benchmark that was previously unfinished by QuizKid. But there is a, a caveat here. This is actually running debug mode. When they run Fiddle Dome in release mode, things are much better. There is a kind of 10X improvement. Also, to, um, also in, in Twiddle Dome, I'm not only measuring the execution time of this, uh, of this substitution process. Because in Twiddle Dome was so fast, so basically I, I decided to measure the execution time for the whole flow. So what Twiddle Dome is basically doing this time, it is parsing a logic network file, building the logic network, applying some low effort optimization to this logic network, synthesizing your parity and Toffoli circuits, and then it decomposes to the Toffoli case. It is able to do all that 10 times faster than what a Pythonic, in this case, QuizKit framework can do just the substitution. Maybe with this, I, I was able to convince you that going C++ is a good idea, but let's face it it is highly likely that you cannot afford some sort of big bang sort of change in your, in, in your Python framework in that overnight, everything becomes C++, right? You might have a big Python code base. You have a lot of classes. The Python code is moving fast. It is a mess. And, and also you might want to still let users write passes in Python, right? Maybe not all users want, want to go to the system level languages. So Twiddle Doom can actually help with that. And what I argue is that you should use Twiddle Doom as your circuit manager. Here is a code snippet that shows how to use Python classes as operators in Twiddle Doom. So you can, you have this my CXX class that you define in Python, you instantiate it, and then you can actually create uh, instruction into a Twiddle Doom data structure by passing this, uh, this, this class. And then at some point you can iterate over your circuit and get your Python object back. The only problem with this, uh, with this approach, it is just that the classes and operators that you define in Python, they will be opaque to your C++ code. So if you have a path that is reading C++, it will not be able to identify the, the operator that you have. How is this implemented under the hood? I basically just define a Python operator. operator. So I just take this uh, operator class that takes the Python object and, and, and saves on it. The rest of the, of the functionality, how to create qubits and et cetera, it is just like basically binding Python to the, to the Twiddle Doom C++ classes for circuit and instructions and et cetera. I use PyBind11 to do this bindings. So if you have, if you want to migrate your Python framework down to, uh, to, down to C++, here's somewhat of a sketch that what you can do. You can start by using Twiddledo as your circuit manager. And here I assume that your, uh, your circuit data structure is definitely decoupled from the rest of your data structures in, in your circuit. And then you don't have passes that poke into the internals of the data structure. Then you can start implementing operators, gates, whatever you call them on the, on the C++ side and providing bindings to the Python to them. And then you can start implementing or translating some passes from the C++ and from, uh, and from, Python, from C++, from Python to C++. 
in the end, you're able to choose then where you are implementing the passes and the operators. And then you, you might have, and then in this transition, you might, you might have passes that are completely translated to, uh, to C++ that will be faster than passes that, have, that only happen in Python. The passes in Python can understand operators from the C++, but if you have a pass in C++, you cannot operate, understand the operators in, uh, that you're defining in Python. So this is kind of also pushes you to go to the lower level, to the system level. So now let me briefly finish by some of the takeaways of this talk. The Twiddle Doom is a library, really important. It is not intended, intended to be a standalone compiler. It is something to be integrated into other compilers. It is flexible and fast. You can define your own operators and abstractions in the IR. And more importantly, you can do that quite easily through the magic of this uh, type erasure. And Twiddle Doom can help you to progressively migrate your Pythonic framework to C++. Now we'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks a lot for your talk. Um, we're all now taking uh, questions from the Slack channel. So the first question is by Alex Kissinger and you would like to know, uh, for using logic networks in a circuit, do you need to fix the number of ancilla you'll use for reversible synthesis in advance? So you do not need, so the synthesis algorithms actually do not, they will create ancillas as they need. So you will fix where the inputs and the outputs of, your, of a network, and then uh, you could fix the ancillas, but right now it is implemented in a way that create ancillas as, as it goes. Okay, and is there some option to do uh, space-time trade-offs then? So there is no such option yet. So to do that, we actually have another library in, 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 our, uh, in, in our lab that actually does pebbling and, uh, and quantum memory management. And then you can explore the trade-offs between uh, more gates and uh, more ancillas and so on. And then uh, Pedro Valiron uh, would like to know, apart from the fact that it is faster, in terms of features or language design, how does this library compare to Qiskit and RepKit? So feature-wise, it, it, it is less feature complete than Qiskit, for example. This library, it is, uh, th there is some small way for that. It is basically me developing that we, we already, I have some algorithms to, to do mapping, synthesis of, of different, uh, from logic networks, truth tables, and, and, uh, and, and some other, other formats. I also have some optimization uh, techniques, but it is definitely less feature complete than, uh, than QuizKit. Comparing to RevKit is, uh, I'm not quite sure. Re RevKit, it is a fairly old, so to speak. I do not know it's been, keep, been keeping up to date. I know that at some point the, Twiddledoom was actually used as the low level library on the new versions of, of RevKit. Okay. Um, then uh, I guess I have a question also. So have you already uh, implemented this, um, this bridge between framework and Twiddledoom for, for one of the Pythonic frameworks that are out there? So I, I have not yet implemented it. Uh, so what, what we have that, that what, what you, what we basically have, it is this, uh, it is this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it has not been integrated in any Pythonic framework yet, but you, you can, uh, if you would declare QuizKit gates here, you could start adding to, uh, to the network and then use Twiddledoom as, and then use gates from from, from the QuizKit library and use Twiddledoom as your circuit manager. Keep in mind that QuizKit already has something that it is in between. So the graph manager in QuizKit, it is implemented in Rust these days. If you look, if you look inside QuizKit, you see that the graph manager, the, what manages the DAG, it is, it is written in Rust. 
and then uh, I'm not familiar with all the numbers, but I think that they reported to have some substantial gains in performance by doing so. This will be one step further, okay? You don't only want to manage the DAG on, this, on the system level. You also want to manage the circuit on such level. Okay. Um, yeah, as far as I can tell, there are no further questions right now. So yeah, let's thank the speaker again. And yeah, thanks Bruno, it was a nice presentation. Thanks. And have a good one.